Brummy called Paul Wesley. Collins is wearing the green trunks. It's a scheduled eight-rounder. Let's rejoin our commentators, Jim and Rich. Second down. And another look then at uh, Steve Collins, the Dubliner is definitely going to fight tonight's winner for the championship. And when he wants to be a very accomplished boxer indeed. Paul Wesley from Birmingham. Loves these candies, trapped shorts, he wears them in all the fights. He gives people a run for their money. If you looked at his record, you think he's not all that good, but he always gives people a hard time. And went the full distance uh, with Chris Pyatt. And that was not so long ago at the Grosvenor House in London. Steve Collins boxed as a substitute last time up in Belfast when uh, Eamon Lochran fought the Italian. And that was uh, fighting Johnny Melfer of Gloucester for the second time. And that's the best we've seen him, I think, uh, since he came back from America. Where he's with the Marvin Hagler camp, the Petronelli brothers, and now he's with Barry Hearn's matchroom team. Only lost three of 29 fights, Steve Collins. Very accomplished performer. But you'll find that Wesley's tricky, tricky enough customer. But of course, the, the odds would be heavily on on Stevens. That's Steve Collins. I don't think, Jim, I don't think Wesley's going to do his traditional little bits of show off sometimes. He's done it. He had tassels on his knees at one time, looked like a Morris dancer getting in the ring. He doesn't do that. He wouldn't do it for this fight anyway. Well, I've always had a, a quite a fair opinion of Paul Wesley. He's a good all-round boxer, good defensive boxer. Just that uh, sometimes he lacks a little bit of ambition to, to push himself all the way. But I think he's going to give us a, you know, a good line on Collins. Uh, most of Collins' recent fights have been against people he's just far too good for. So he's only been half-hearted. He's never had to work hard. So I think uh, Paul Wesley, if he's in shape and if he fancies the job, he's going to make Collins work a little bit harder. So maybe let us just judge how good he is now. And uh, the fact that uh, he's fought Pyatt recently, uh, it's going to be a good comparison just to see how good a job Steve Collins can do on him. Referee is Rich Thompson. Nice counter punching from Collins here, just waited his chance and sprung right back in. Well, he's been in with the big names, Jim, isn't he? And in, in majority decisions to Reggie Johnson and Sambu Bay in championship fights, one in New Jersey and one in Italy. And then he fought Mike McCullum, a really good champion. And that was a good fight too in Boston. There it is, the statistics then for Steve Collins. He's, well, he's entitled to a bit more exposure, really, than he's been getting, because the, the trade now he can fight. He, he has messed around in some of the uh, non-title fights recently, but he did look the business in the second fight with Melfa in Belfast. 15 stopped. There's Paul Wesley. 42 fights this fellow's had. He hasn't won all that many. No, he hasn't there at Chelsea there. And drawn four of them, so that shows he's, you know, he's in a lot of close ones, and he doesn't always get the best of the verdict. Manager, Nobby Nobbs, bit of a character, this one out of uh, the Birmingham area. Second round coming up. And uh, only just a few flurries early on there with, with Collins. Wesley looks as though he wants to make it tough for him, Reg. I mean, he is a decent fighter, and if he fancies the job tonight, he's going to give uh, Collins some hot times. He slapped that right hand punch, though, just like him, uh, Collins, didn't he? Yeah, that was a strange uh, punch, but still, most of his punching has been good in, in the first round. He put them together quite well. 
he sprung into action nicely, Collins. I think he's got himself sharpened up. I've always felt that Collins needs a fight that means something. His, his recent fights, which we've covered, have been meaningless guys he's too good for. He really needs a world championship fight to bring out the best. This is good stuff from Collins, Ray. Just is as good as I've seen him. He's not the easiest fighter to knock over, Paul Wesley. Years ago, Rod Douglas did it. Now retired. Up in London. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. But he usually stays the course with everybody. There you go. He's getting through. He's not throwing too many punches in this round, Wesley, but the few that he's letting go are catching Collins. And putting him on the defensive as well, I might add. Ah, just a slip. That was a little bit wild, that right hand uh, from Wesley. You see how Wesley keeps the weight on his back foot, just trying to draw leads so they can swing back in with a right hand counter. This is a more intense battle than the, the one where Wesley and Pyatt. Pyatt boxed them from long, from uh, long range a bit better than Collins, and this is really getting involved. Wesley's one of these fellas that promoters know when they, they call him to come down, he's going to give everybody trouble. Won't always get the verdict, but he'll be in there. See, I've, always, I've always felt that Wesley's not far off from just being amongst the top boys. You know, he's got a lot of talent, good defensive boxing. But, uh, you know, he doesn't sustain. And he kind of messes about a little bit too often. Third round, scheduled for eight. And uh, the Irishman, Steve Collins. He's finding not easy now, it's this good journeyman, Paul Wesley. But there's so much at stake for Collins, he, he really doesn't want to make any mistake at all. And his next fight could be the WBO Championship of the World Challenger. I like the way Collins is prepared to let the punches go in threes and fours. He's not just trying the single, he's working with the single jabs well. But every chance he's letting some punches flow. That's a dangerous looking uppercut from Wesley. Did well, Colin, to, with the weight because I know he came in as a substitute when he defeated Johnny Melfer in Belfast. He was 12 stone two. And he came in 11, 8, and 6 ounces for this fight. Switched to southpaw briefly there by Wesley. Oh, stamped his feet there, Jim. Just to say, what was that all about? And Wesley's getting out, worked and out, pointed so far, but he's putting up a good show. This is a good test for Collins. Takes a good punch, Wesley. Neat in lead to in this fight. Yeah, he's just been outworked. Uh, Collins is that bit stronger, and he's uh, certainly thrown more punches. He learned a bit of the American style out there. 21 fights in the states. Holds a thing called the WBO Pentacontinental Championship. I don't know whether that gives you a discount if you stay at those hotels, but that's about all it's worth.
good bit of hard exercise. Perhaps a bit more than that now for Steve Collins. Championship challenger. Well, I've never seen anybody having an easy time with Wesley. And he's quite pumped up for this. If he probably looks upon this as if he can score an upset, get himself among the big boys. He did that, remember, Jim, at the Royal Albert Hall when he got a draw with Tony Collins, when he was very much the underdog. Well, he fancies himself to win. He's been saying that in, the, in his local papers, anyway, that uh, can I leapfrog this and try and get in with the big fight winner? Jim? Well, when it comes right down to the nitty-gritty, then uh, Collins is the stronger of the two and he's putting punches together better. But he's still got a lot of problems in front of him, I think. fourth round then of the scheduled eight and sometimes warm-ups for fighters can become a bit too hot and in the way it is for Collins he's, he's winning okay but Paul Wesley well he's tricky tough willing Flo throws plenty of level though Collins it's, it's an entertaining fighter yeah, well, I think he's realised himself that this is going to be a busy night for him. He's got himself in good shape, he's sharpened up. He's obviously training with a world title fight in mind. So his attitude is good and sharp. But it's just as well because Wesley Light is very lively. Wesley's not throwing a lot of punches, but he's a fierce success rate with the punches he does throw. He's getting through to Collins. only threatening with the right hand there, he's just waiting to see the opening properly. Oh, he's tried the left hook instead anyway, well, left swing really. So you can see how Wesley, he keeps his weight on his back foot, just waiting to, to lean back from the lead and spring with a counter, and he's quite successful with it. So he's just slightly leaning on his back foot, just trying to draw the lead from Collins. This is a good battle, Reg. This is two good pros we're watching. Yeah, the Essex crowd can afford to be uh, very neutral here. Yeah, good to some of the success with the long range stuff coming from Wesley now. Not the easiest fighter to catch Wesley, is it, Jim? He slips away cleverly. Yeah, as I said in the first round, I've got a high opinion of Wesley. A lot of talent, a lot of experience. And as I say, I've never seen anybody have an easy night with him. He's just been outworked a little bit. Colin's doing the right thing, keeping the pressure up. Now, is Wesley just acting or here? Is he a little bit shaking? I think he's just really acting. He's going to have to start throwing back. Here it comes. He sort of winds himself up by standing the floor there, doesn't he? It's almost like a referee, <laughs> wrestling referee saying, you know, do you submit? I'm counting three. That's another good jab from Wesley, catching Collins cleanly with those jabs. Fifth round then, and Steve Collins get well, pretty good workout one way or another against Paul Wesley. And when you think that Collins has been in with three very good world champions, Reggie Johnson, Sam Bruce and uh, Mike McCullum, a great ring general, and take them all down to the wire really, it's, uh, it's good performances. So he needs to really sharpen it up now that he's uh, in Britain, boxing is... Only had a couple of fights in Ireland. Work, 
Collins. See, I think this is a night where Collins uh, should use his strength and his punch rate. Wesley's not uh, an opponent you want to try the fancy stuff with because he's very sleek himself. And if he if he can encourage uh, Collins to drop the pace, he's going to make it far more difficult. See, Collins wants to do this, dictate the pace, keep the punches flowing and use his strength. This is good stuff from Collins. Well, no knockdowns so far in case you've joined us late. And scheduled for eight rounds at the middleweight division. And we're midway through the fifth round. Cheeky when he turns southpaw and picks a punch off Let Wesley. Yeah, well, he can do a little bit of everything. See, he's landing well when the lets the punches go. He's not throwing enough punches, I don't think, to win the, the fight, Wesley. But uh, when he does let the punches go, he's landing cleanly and he's showing a few gaps in Collins' defence. So there's that right hand again. Yeah, he can't afford to take those. I have to say, Collins is outworking him in most of the rounds. Fashion one, two, and it worked perfectly. Good win on there when he beat uh, Tony Thornton, who fought you, Bank Jim. Well, Wesley's under pressure for most of the time, but still very dangerous with the, the right hands he comes back with. But again, Collins is what rate. Has to be nicking the rounds. Been caught with clean counters, but uh, not enough of them to, to turn the, the tide in his favour. But see, that's that right hand again. He's always ready to come back with a single counter. Knows his business, doesn't he? 31 Call years old now, Paul Wesley. His last fight, he beat Warren Stowe in a light middleweight eliminator, weighed 10 stone 13. 11-6 for this one. Sixth round. And the Dubliner Steve Collins, well, comfortably ahead, Jim, but getting a real good workout here by Wesley. Yeah, I think Collins must be thinking this is more of a warm-up than I could be doing with. And this is a hard night's work for him. You'd imagine the longer it goes, uh, Collins' is natural strength. I mean, Collins must normally walk around uh, well over the 12 stone. So he's a, he's a big middleweight, and the longer this fight goes, you would imagine his strength will maybe start to, to take the steam out of Wesley. Wesley taking the shots without any problems and still managing to push Collins back. Good work rate from Collins, always all the way through, it's been a good work rate. Yeah, he's fought himself into shape there if he wasn't already. This is good action. 
Fishing Ridge. Both stand on their ground. No signs yet that Collins is too strong for Wesley. This is good stuff. As you said earlier, Jim, you know, a couple of good pros there, aren't they? Well, almost veterans, 29 and 31. Still Wesley coming forward, I mean he's done well back in Collins up this round. Still Collins the one with a slightly higher work rate. Try not take too many chances here as well, Collins. You know, he's not being rash with anything, is he, Jim? Well, a few gaps have appeared in his defence, Red, and Wesley's exploited them, but not enough to, to turn the fight in his favour. But then he was just. Seventh round of a scheduled eight. With the Irishman, Steve Collins, well, ahead okay, but getting a really tough workout there by Paul Wesley of Birmingham, the 43rd fight. Collins has had 29 1, 26, stopped to 15. And the three losses were against world champions in the championship fights. In a pro since uh, 1986, Collins, so it's time he had a further crack at, at uh, the world championship because he's justified it. Wesley started this round well with a jab. Landed some nice left jabs at long range. If it goes to the eighth round and points, Jim, it'll be the first time uh, in his last, now become six fights since he joined the Barry Hearn camp for Collins. He stopped the others. Well, this is the most uh, meaningful opponent I've seen him in against, Reg. I mean, some of the fights, he, he was just going through the motions. He knew he was far too good for the other fellow. But... Uh, Paul Wesley takes your full attention if you want the job done properly. And to his credit, uh, Collins has responded well, performed well tonight. The boat's just getting a little bit tired. Well, he's had a quiet night, hasn't he, Red Thompson, the referee? And, of course, no judges here it's in an eight-rounder. Only one uh, arbiter, the referee. And it's a half-point system, uh, not the single-point scoring that we have in World Championship or European Championship fights. Collins has been a little bit lazier than this round. He hasn't managed to pin Wesley down. Maybe he's going to have a bit of a bust in the last minute. Quiet round the seventh, Jim, has turned out. Yeah, well, I think they're both feeling the pace a little bit. Uh, Collins obviously must feel he's ahead, so he doesn't want to do anything silly. But he certainly dropped the pace a little bit. round now then let's have yeah, a look at it again Jim probably the quietest round of the fight so far but I, I would imagine they're both saving themselves for a, for a big last round oh well one's aiming at the spittoon and the, the other's aiming for his nose Ten 
second out, eighth and last round. Eighth round. Final round then. And Steve Collins has had a really hard workout with Paul Wesley here. Accomplished fighter, the Irishman, and uh, well, too many gets a decision here, and there's still what two and three quarter minutes to go anyway. I'll give the winner of the big fight tonight plenty of trouble because he's very experienced and uh, had three good world championship fights and took them to the wire, all three of them. And if he happened to get it in Dublin, Jim, who knows, it might fire him to become champion at last. Well, Wesley still managing to back him up. I mean, I don't know if he feels he's got enough points in the bag to coast a little bit, but uh, I think it'd be better advised to grit his teeth and start uh, trying to control this last round, push Wesley back. Two minutes to go. Been pumping those punches in now, and it looks good for Collins now. A bit more of that is what he needs just to put a clincher on a decent performance. Doesn't want to fall asleep in the last round. Let's let the punches keep flowing. He'd love to stop wrestling now. See, Wesley's beaten Neville Brown, uh, had him over in the first round actually, one of the big turn ups in the trade, and Neville Brown's now. British middleweight champion, although he did lose the return on points to Brown. He's only really a big, light middleweight most of the time. Jim, is not he, Paul Wesley? He's been in the like, 11 stone mark, and now he's up to 11-6. Yeah, I, th I thought the longer this went, that the strength of Collins would start to take charge, but that hasn't happened, and Wesley's pushing him back in the last round. Good exchange here. Yeah, Collins for me has always had the edge and the work rate, pumping the punches out, putting them together better. Wesley, a lot of good pro moves and some good single punching action. I always feel that Collins has been busier. Oh, yeah, there's no question of the position, do you know? I mean, I'd probably got a couple of even rounds, I would have thought, Wesley, that's all. Be blowing a bit there, though, Colin. Jimmy had a bit of a go there. And... Yeah, well, it's been a hard yeah. one, Reg. It's, it's difficult to raise yourself for these eight rounders just when you're thinking about world titles. You think it's going to be a little workout, you're not psychologically up as you should be. And it can turn out to be a hard night's work, and this certainly has been that. There's no point scoring that now. Just go over and hold the hand up right away. Wesley's well pleased there that he's given him a, a good fight. That's where he's looking to to get the winner and make it a formality. You know, Wesley has the look of a man who wanted to put up a good show, and that's what he's done. No, no yeah. complaints. So there it is. Then. Sorry, Jim. Steve Collins uh, getting in, getting himself right to the front now. Next fight, World Championship fight. That's right. Good fight. They enjoyed that, but was it a lot harder than you'd have wanted? Um, no, it was harder than I expected. Um, Looking back on the fight now, it's, it's perfect for me because I've got the world title fight now on the 16th of April. I've had a quick, I'm not sorry, I had a hard eight rounds. It, it sharpened me up. And I actually think Chris Pye now is the one that lost tonight. He looked great in his win, quick win, but I'm the one who got the workout. I'm the one who's going to be more sharp now. How confident are you that you can beat Chris Pye in his hometown in Leicester? I believe I am a better fighter, but on top of that, I'm a true middleweight. I think Pye is, is um, boxing out of his division. I'm a big middleweight who works to make the weight and I'm strong. So I have the advantage there as regards physical size. But you're quite similar in many ways, aren't you? You're two pros who've been around for a while mm -hmm. and are really looking to make hay late in your career. Well, well, neither of us is a novice. We're both experienced pros. We both know the game. And uh, it's going to be a good fight. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's got all the makings of a good fight. Mm -hmm. And I look forward to it. It's my chance. I believe in the best in the world. I've, I've fought the best out there. I've beaten the best. But I just haven't got the title to prove it. And you've got a rather big event happening before the world title fight, finally. Yes, my um, third child is due in two weeks' time, so I'll take a break, I'll go home and spend some time with my poor wife. <laughs> <laughs> Stick through her, through her fight, and when that's over... That's a um, tough one. It'll be a double header, hopefully, <laughs> with me and, and, the, and the new baby. Lovely, Steve. We Cheers. look forward to seeing you in Leicester in April. Well done tonight. Thanks very much. OK, well, we'll... Uh,